Here we are, and we're in the boat, Dad. We're in Garvia. We're in Garvia. Which is the uh, generic name for a loon. And they, they swim nicely. They dive too, which is unfortunate. <laughs> not this boat. That's not this boat, hopefully. We are standing in the saloon, which is where the living is going to be. The roof is going to be over my head, hopefully, so I can stand and oh, look at six foot two headroom. Mm -hmm. And here we're going to have some cabinets and a, a sink and a cooker. Over here is going to be a, a berth, a single sleeping place, which is looking a bit small at the moment. But uh, I think I may bring it up and bring it out because this here is where the windows are going to start. So the windows will be up higher and I want to be able to see out when I'm sitting. So we're just figuring things out right now. We're just mocking up, getting a rough idea where the, the bed's going to be. And this is the, the toilet in here behind this very firmly fixed bulkhead. <laughs> and this That's is not a, a load bearing. Balsa this wood. is the, the composting toilet, which raises eyebrows and worries to lots of people. <laughs> anyway, the next mock up is going to be steps up to the saloon, up to the uh, cockpit, I'm sorry. And I've taken off. And it's quite interesting. This hull, the hull design has a tunnel in the stern. And this, you can see, this is the outside of the boat here. The water is supposed to imitate the stern wave of the boat, except it's in the, un, under the boat. So it's a very clean flow, which makes, makes the boat uh, pretty efficient, which is nice. But all this is based on a hull that was designed the year I was born in 1947. Mm -hmm. And people have started to build tunnel stern boats by that designer, William Atkin. So I, I'm hopeful. I have faith that this thing will float and work. Yeah. And I didn't like the way that Atkin had the the top sides above the water level. So below the water level, it's all pretty well what uh, Atkin, William Atkin designed with the tunnel and the, the flat floor. But above the decks, I'm, I'm copying a design uh, by David Gurr, who's a renowned marine architect. And I bought a set of plans for his boat called Escapade, which is a 25 foot, uh, had a motor in it, diesel motor, I guess. But he managed to cram so much into a 25 feet. So I thought, oh, I can do that. But it's gonna be crowded. I mean, look at the toilet. It's very, very tight in there. Yeah, not a lot of room. And I think the boat looks fine until you see somebody on it. Like I'm gonna be standing up, up to this height looking at this is a high this is the top of the uh, the ceiling this is the cabin top mm -hmm. so i can steer with a tiller from here and see out over the top and i think that's all we're going to have for now we're not going to worry about it inside steering station but just a tiller like you'd have on a sailboat or just a tiller that's, gonna, okay. that's easy right it's gonna for now on top of, this is the rudder stock coming up here so the rudder which Jay has photographs of. Yeah. Um, so the tiller will come out, probably this will stay up. And so when I'm standing here, I can hold the tiller with my left hand. Cool. Or whoever is steering. So talk about the line of the boat and how you decided. I did change a bit of that. I, I, I did a process called lofting, which is when you draw the lines of a boat before you start building, you draw the lines in full scale, so it's 25 feet long drawing basically. Um, and you can change things and you put battens on the lines and make sure that the battens are nice and smooth, they don't have kinks in them. And you can just play around with the design a bit. And I, I did change the bow, I made it a plum vertical bow instead of a more average rake back bow. I see, yeah. This is in the hull now. Um, and that interesting it's really interesting it changed a lot of things to make it all the lines go fairly to the bow so I learned a lesson there but I, I think it'll work and then these tow rails these are rails to stop your feet falling off when you're walking and the boat's rolling a bit and it was hard I found it hard 
to think about how to get these bent because they bend down for the shear and they bend in mm -hmm. for the other direction. But as it turned out, using poplar, poplar is very tough wood. And I just used a lot of clamps, didn't steam it, didn't laminate it. And it just went in with enough enough force, which is very, very nice. Is there any downside to poplar? The downside of poplar is it's not, um, it doesn't stand up to rot, so it rots quite easily. And I'm hoping that because the boat's not going to be in the water the whole time, and because most of it's covered in epoxy, that it won't be a problem. But I like using local woods as against importing woods from foreign countries and the west coast. So poplar's grown right here. We've got big poplar trees outside the door. Yeah, it's got a couple of coats of uh, epoxy and then fiberglass. And I didn't fill the, the web in because then it's uh, anti-slip. I like that. Whereas these, this roof, no, that may be the same, maybe the same. But the inside of the hull and the outside of the hull I tried to make smooth. And I used poplar for the strips too. And luckily they were very bendable and never broke, even with a contortion, major contortion. And they they will be finished smooth. They're, they're being beaten up now from all the work. But hopefully everything will be nice and smooth and painted eventually. And talk about the bottom of the boat because this boat has got a flat bottom. So why did why yeah, this, is that appealing? The shape of the of the cabin sole is the shape of the of the keel, and it's completely flat from almost at the stern to almost at the bow. And that was just the design, and so I copied it. And I think it'll be great for drying out. So we can just, down at the coast, we can go in somewhere at half tide and make sure that the bottom's smooth with feeling around, make sure there's no wrecks and rocks. But it, then let the tide go out. We can sit there flat on the bottom and it'll be, be lovely, I think. No other boats will be there for sure. Because <laughs> they can't be there. Well, I guess they, in theory. They could if they did the same thing, but there aren't many boats that do that. And then what's on the bottom, what's protecting the boat on the very bottom? Yeah, I was worried about that. I was worried about having just wood and fiberglass, although the, the fiberglass is tough. But I was worried about, okay, what if we land on an oyster bed or something mm -hmm. with sharp prongs? So I read about this stuff called G10, which is a plastic extruded uh, epoxy with glass inside it. I think it's just fiberglass, but it's extruded to a very um, strict dimensions. So I could buy a 3 16th thick several sheets of G10 and I just glued them. I didn't have to screw them up into mm. the hull so I did, had no penetration of the original keel but I just glued this onto the outside of the keel on the bottom to match this shape and I feel very confident about that being tough. Yeah. So you know the boat the boat could just land on one rock I think and the boat would just pivot it wouldn't break. So, but all this is theory, so one of these days we're going to have a launching yeah. and hopefully the boat will float to the lines and one of these days we'll go down to the coast, we have the trailer outside and uh, take it for a spin. And what's, So what's the next medium term uh, goal? Goal is to, I can't, the drawback here having the boat in the garage is I cannot take it out. Mm -hmm. of the garage once I've built this high structure, the saloon. So I can't build it now. I've got to build it when it's outside the, the garage. So the goal when it's in the garage for the next probably year is to decide on the cabinets and just make the inside. I can put the cabinets in, I can put the seats in, I can frame for the loo. Um, I just can't go up over my head height. Yeah. It, it wouldn't go out the garage. So that's the goal is to get all these, I can do a lot of lot of work in here now. This is almost done. Got to build a hatch for this hatch hole here. Um, otherwise, the four peak's done. That's great. Yeah, no, it's it's coming on, but it's slow. A lot of time spent in the thinking chair, <laughs> thinking about how to do stuff. Think five times, measure four times. Yeah. Cut once. Right, right. It's a lot of that.
and getting up early and drinking tea and running thoughts through my head, spinning geometrical designs around. Will this fit? And then you come down to the boat and it doesn't fit, or it does fit, <laughs> and you just go from there. But it's a, it's a great project. Why do you need a bow thruster? Well, I was, I'm concerned because at the coast, I've been down there coming into a marina to docking and there'll be a, a strong wind. It could be gale force winds for days on end down there, especially in the afternoons. Yeah, yeah, there it is. This is a picture of what the boat hopefully will look like. And we've done, done the hull, we've done the fore peak. I've got to build the hatch and it's going to get a porthole both sides. But this high roof here and the flat glass sides are going to catch the wind. Um, something awful. So a bow thruster, which means you can just make the water go out left or right um, through that tube, will push the bow left or right, depending on what you want. And uh, that will help a lot, I hope. And here's the rudder, Oh yeah, which it's is a, supported by that large... The original rudder designed by William Atkin was a flat steel or aluminum plate, which wasn't very hydrodynamic. So I I've really like this. That's a thistle rudder, which in the, the plan view looks like a bit like a teardrop with that slight bulge out at the back end which is supposed to make it very good for low speed turning. And then I added a plate on the bottom just for the heck of it, because that's supposed to help. Like, like the, the big jets and the aeroplanes, they, uh, it stops turbulence at the end. Mm -hmm. So it should be good. There you go. So that's another thing that I haven't tried, obviously. It wasn't in the drawings. Cool. Yep. Get a photograph of the motor. Yeah. It's all covered up, but still, whatever. So that's that's it for now, I guess.